Hey, Chloe. I don't know if <laughs> you actually remember uh, the face behind the name, but thank you for just replying and liking the birthday fortune. Um, that's just from this little gem I picked up along my travels that I've always just kind of used as like a reference whenever I like meet people and just kind of going through it. Uh, yeah, I had written your name down, I'm assuming from when we first met at, what? Marijuana Radio? And yeah, so I hope that wasn't like creepy or anything like that. But like I said, I've had this book for a long time now and it's just got some fun fortunes. And uh, if I just may share, like, your fortune is the only one I've ever come across that has the merry early in life like mine does. I don't know. Like, mine ends with it. It says, you should marry early in life. Yours is peppered in your fortune, which is nice to me. I would have loved that. I mean, you are gentle, kind, and loving, but sometimes domineering. I mean, <laughs> I... I Totally, totally 100% agree. I don't know about the domineering part, but like I could tell you had, you had confidence to you when we first met, you know, like my memory of that young Chloe, you were independent. I remember your story about, you know, just all you've gone through and uncommunicative. You never called me back. <laughs> Actually, and have a good deal of self-confidence in your own ability. You should marry early in life. <laughs> your love is strong, and you need love and devotion in return. <laughs> Chloe, I was just joking about the uncommunicative part. <laughs> Not calling me back. Because you did call me back, and I don't know if you remember. But when you called me back, you had given me... opportunity to take part in what you were about to just do what you did with like there are very few moments in my life where I go back and I'm just like man what was I thinking but I just hope that you know when you were just asking me if I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to you know be you know like a <laughs> like a founding investor in you know I believe it turned into Cloverleaf like I just hope that you know that when I did not go on the offer it was just because at that time My parents told me when they found out I was selling weed, like I was the kid that they were trying to hide me from. And like my mom gave me this huge guilt trip about how terrible she feels that her son is that kid for all the other kids. And I was just like, all right, geez, I'm not like selling like cracked kids. Like I'm selling pot. It was pot. You know, this is like, college 2000 what 10 years ago or so I mean like it was so long ago and then people like you changed that and I just hope that you truly truly like understand like how inspiring like you, for me personally, just knowing you, you know, there's that if you see her, you can be her thing. Like, yeah, I see her. I know her. I've talked to her. Like, like you've just been a, a person who in my life, I've, I've come across many people 
I've had people enter my life that I wish I hadn't, but you were just like one of those people where like today, even now more than ever, like, I'm just like so grateful that for whatever reason our stars aligned and we were just where we were that day to just like have this, you know, like it's a beautiful thing. And um, just the irony of that is just like when I told my parents about that and you did what you did. And all of a sudden, you know, dispensaries are like the big, like investment talk. Like, I also want you to know like how much I thank you for just like when my parents came back and they were just like, so would you be interested in having your own dispensary? And I was like, first of all, we could have gotten in on this from day one. <laughs> And second of all, like, I don't know. I kind of felt like maybe it was like a sting operation, but I was like, no. You know, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if this is a trick, but I do not want a dispensary. I don't want a liquor store. I don't want to run a laundromat. I don't want to run a normal business that exists today. You know, I want to create something that doesn't exist. If that was possible. Again, this is going to get real deep. But yeah, when I told him no, my brother was like, are you kidding me? Like anytime mom and dad like offer us a chance to sell drugs, we should take it. And I was just like, did you just hear what you just said? And just, like I, I am just like blown away that you had this vision of the future. And made it. And so again, for that, like the fact that I can just like now <laughs> cut out like Dick Black and like the Brent the Greats and stuff like that, like to go get some pot or whatever and just walk down a store. Just get that. Like I attribute that freedom to you and Cloverleaf for just being the pioneers who did that. So I don't know. Your fortune says you need love and devotion. I hope somehow if you needed that, this helps in that way. But just let the overall takeaway just be like, I am just so proud of you and to be able to like hear back from you, you know? I figured somebody by your status probably would have changed their number. But again, somebody like me who's just gone through these different levels of status you know, I don't know. I just, I hope that me sending you that, making this video for you to watch isn't just like, oh, this guy is just crazy stalker. Because, I mean, <laughs> uh, talk about that if you want another time. Ultimately, Chloe, aside from all that, keep doing what you're doing. I hope that you are enjoying the fruits of your, of your sacrifices, your risks. So 
coming from somebody who was born in to that tier. And I say this to you because you are like my father. Like everything you have is you. You know, like <laughs> yeah, maybe a couple hands had you could attribute, but it was all you. My dad came here with nothing and created everything that I know. And I know you are the same person. You were the woman who just had her little talk and an idea. And like that to me is the American dream where like you can just dream something and make it come true. And people like you are, in my opinion, underappreciated, under examined or you know like in the sense of what it takes as an American in America to become someone good and I only say this because now with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing there's all this thing about like oh it's just like I'm trying to create something to show our fellow people this is good. That is not. Now, this is the part where I'm probably going to lose you. <laughs> Depending on your faith or your beliefs, this is going to scare, offend, it's going to push you back. I know it. But I am this second coming of Jesus Christ that everybody is waiting for and been praying for to come. This was a dream I had when we met and like <laughs> it was a nightmare like I was just like come on no I pursued comedy I ran away from that dream and yada 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 I'm here and I am grateful to have this second chance on fulfilling this dream but I don't know. I've been doing it on my own without without any kind of like I've been doing it through my own means and watching how other people are doing what I'm trying to do. And again, I look at it like, as like, I'm not trying to be this second Jesus. I'm just trying to be the answer to fixing our country because I don't know. I don't know if you got married and have kids, but you know, I just recently found out I'm going to be like an uncle. My brother is having a baby. You know, I've been made uncle to all my friends' kids, but this is like official. So when I found that news out, like the world that I just kind of just frolic along in became real. And the world that I see is terrifying to me. And so just coming from somebody who you know, like 
sees this, it just like wants to change it is why I ask you, someone who I know like saw this and was told like, you'll never, but proved everybody wrong. I'm not here to prove anything to anybody, but I'm at a point where it's just like, what game face do I have to put on, Chloe? for people to listen to me, you know? You being just like you in your position, you know? Being a woman, just all that. I'm sure you had all these judgments that you've gone through. I gone through similar and predict all those ones. I've, I've foreseen this, I'm in alignment, you know? Like, I say this like I'm Jesus 2.0 with like, a reasonable mind, ready to explain what I mean, what I'm talking about to anybody who just has the balls to take a leap of faith for like five minutes and just like hear what I gotta say. I don't know. So like, coming back to that time when you reached out to me and offered me an opportunity opportunity to change the world and you know I knew you would do it without me but in the same speaking I am reaching out to you to give you an opportunity to tell me what you think am I Nuts? Am I like freaking you out? What is the public opinion? Because I don't know. From the videos I've been making, all this stuff, I would really value the criticism or feedback or just thoughts that somebody who has the relationship that you and I have, just, you know, acquaintances who just are acquaintances. But if this hopefully reaches you with like an open heart and open mind to hear these words and this, <laughs> this request, please hit me up. And if I don't hear from you, I will totally understand. But just know that this is what I'm going to be doing. So hopefully, and I said, like I'm running for president on my birthday, November 5th, 2024. So if all this works, I will be president on that day. And so I guess this would be me doing like a visualization affirmation law, laws of nature. I'm sure you know it, but thank you, Chloe. I hope to hear from you, but if I don't, I totally understand. And uh, if you've made it this long in the video, thank you for your time and the, the mark that you made in my life and I'm sure so many other people's lives. And I hope that they appreciate you a quarter of as much as I appreciate you.